Hi, I'm Steve Shelburne, owner and operator of Shelburne RV here in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee. Good afternoon guys, Steve Shelburne, Shelburne RV. I want to take a uh, few minutes and do a video with you guys here today about this manufacturer's RM1350. Um, I, you know, this has been a very challenging refrigerator to work on over the years. Um, it, it has been, uh, you know, it's been a struggle with some of the, some of the problems that this refrigerator is having. I spent the weekend uh, watching YouTube videos um, trying to see what you guys were talking about, see what, see what everybody's got out there, see what kind of videos they have on troubleshooting. And nobody's really touching on some of the items that I know have been a problem with this refrigerator. So we're gonna to touch on that today because again, this is a good refrigerator. Once we resolve all of the problems that the manufacturer installed that I feel are wrong, but again, I'm gonna show you where a lot of the problems are on this. And once you resolve these issues, this is a great refrigerator, guys. Um, once I get all these fixed, typically I don't have any problems with this manufacturer's refrigerator. All right, so before we get going, I just wanna, I wanna tell you guys, you know, I, I really haven't done a very many, very many videos on ammonia refrigerator troubleshooting. Um, you know, you guys see where we're kind of putting some together, we're pulling apart, we're reinstalling, but I really never have done any videos on that. Um, guys, we started this business 15 years ago. Mr. Sid, my father, started this business uh, specializing in ammonia refrigerators. Now, Daddy spent 40 years um, doing uh, industrial ammonia refrigeration. He retired. One day, he came across an ad uh, put in a magazine by a gentleman named Roger Ford over at the Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center. And Daddy found this fascinating. He went to school. He learned everything he could from Mr. Roger. Uh, started Shelburne RV refrigeration. So I've not really done a lot of troubleshooting videos on that because um, Roger does have a very well rounded um, YouTube channel that has a lot of that stuff in there. And uh, Roger started doing this 30 plus years ago. He pretty much wrote the book on RV refrigeration repair, uh, recharging, troubleshooting. Um, so I really haven't done very many videos on that. I, I just, I would tell you to go on there and like his page on YouTube. Um, you can also visit him on the website. Uh, so that's where I would refer you guys to, to go on there and watch his videos. Um, cause he's really got everything covered when it comes to that. Today, I'm pretty much going to touch on, um, this manufacturer's RM 1350. And again, we're going to show you all the ins and outs that go along with this refrigerator and why it does not work correctly and why they can't tell you at the factory why it's doing what it's doing. So we're gonna to touch on that now. Okay, so a few things that I get calls about on this uh, manufacturer's refrigerator is just the fact that, you know, hey, it can't keep anything cold, uh, the temperature won't get below, you know, 38, 39 degrees, you know, and I don't understand why the refrigerator is doing what it's doing. One thing to keep in mind, people are looking at this temperature gauge right here and they're, they're looking at the temperature Keep in mind that this temperature gauge up here is based on a three hour average. That is not a running temperature in this refrigerator. So I always tell my customers, you know, don't rely on that. In fact, I really don't care what that temperature is. I really want you to get thermostats inside the freezer and inside the refrigerator space so that we can get an accurate temperature on that. Um, even to go further than that, if you call in for troubleshooting on this model, Typically, they don't want that temperature either. They want you to put a cup of water in there and get the liquid temperature that's in there. Now, most mechanical temperatures, once, it, once they're in there, you're gonna get what you get and you're gonna see what you have. So that's kind of what I, I have the customers doing. But, you know, I've seen some videos on there where people were talking about the doors not shutting. That's all fine and dandy. There's lots of little tricks. You need a fan inside, inside the refrigerator. Yes, all that works good. But let's get down to the nuts and bolts of what's causing this refrigerator not to cool. And I can tell you there's, there's two major things in, in this 1350 um, that I have seen over the years and nobody's really talking about it because I've never seen it anywhere on any of the YouTube videos that I've seen. We're gonna dive into that now. 
One of the issues um, that I see primarily in this is this cooling unit in this refrigerator is installed incorrectly. Now, if you call the OEM, OEM manufacturer, they're gonna say that's wrong, um, and I'm gonna show you why now. So you can see I've got this, I've got this 1350 pulled apart. Obviously, this is the case. This is the cooling unit. Now, the one thing that you're gonna notice here real quick is this right here, this tin foil. See how this tin foil is put on this cooling unit right here? So part of the problem is, is the secret to this refrigerator working is this thermal mastic, okay? This thermal mastic is what is actually between the, the coil and the inside of the refrigerator. This is what transfers all the temperature into your refrigerator and absorption refrigerator, we have to absorb the heat out of the refrigerator. So this thermal mastic is what's helping pull the heat out of your refrigerator. Now, we used to rebuild cooling units for years. Um, Whenever we would go and marry the cooling unit back into the case, we would always wrap this with press and seal, okay? Thin press and seal like you get at the grocery store. We would, we would, we would put that in there. We would go in here on this coil and we would put thermal mastic and you can see the thermal mastic right here. We'd thermal mastic this and then we would put it in there and we would tighten all the bolts down. Once that was done, then we would go in here and foam it foam the cooling unit into the case. The reason they do all this is that if you ever have to pull this cooling unit out of this refrigerator, it's not, the foam is not stuck. It's, it's not one piece of foam. Uh, you, got, you got this to keep it from, from sticking inside there. Now, when we use press and seal, that press and seal is real thin and, and the thermal mastic still transfers through that. If you look at this right here, this is a barrier. The thermal mastic's against the, against the tin foil, but not against this case. We want it as much against that case as we can. Now, the OEM manufacturer will tell you that that only makes a two degrees difference. I can tell you it makes between five and eight degrees difference because some of these only have one layer. Some of them I get have two layers. So again, you have no way of transferring that thermal mastic so it can pull the heat out of your refrigerator. That's problem number one. That's the one I have the most trouble out of. Now people go, Steve, how do you know if it's got the tin foil on the cooling unit? That's a great question. So typically when somebody comes in and says, hey, my 1350 is not cooling whatsoever, uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to run this refrigerator in bypass mode, okay? Bypass mode is going to tell us what this cooling unit is actually capable of, okay? So we want it to run wide open, nonstop. We want to take the controls completely out of the situation so that we can see what the capability of this cooling unit is. Is the cooling unit plugged up? Has the cooling unit lost its charge? Does it have a high pressure leak and maybe the hydrogens come out of? Doing a bypass mode test will absolutely tell us what direction we need to go with this cooling unit. Also, depending on how much temperature is coming across the top of this coil, tells me a big story of what this cooling unit's actually doing. So for us to do a bypass mode, there's two ways that we need to do that. We either need to hook the heat elements straight up to 110 plug, which again, um, I would not recommend you guys doing that because of electrical shock, it can be dangerous. Um, do get a professional to help you do that. Or the other option is you can get a spare thermistor and the control board that's on this, if you unplug the thermistor, it will actually lock the board out. The board will stop, the, it'll shut everything down, okay? On the two door, uh, six cubic foot and eight foot cubic foot Dometic two door refrigerators, if you unplug that thermistor, that control board actually thinks that board is, the refrigerator is 90 degrees inside. So it will never shut the heat elements off. It will continually run in a 24 hour period. We can see what it does. On this particular 1350, you can't do that with this control board. So what they tell you to do is just get you a spare thermistor, um, particularly one that's correct. And how do we know it's correct? We've got to stick this thermistor down in a glass of ice water, let it sit in there for 
four to five minutes. And then we're gonna take our ohm meter and we're gonna ohm across this. And this needs to have a measurement in ohms between 8,500 and 9,500 ohms. If that ohm reading is correct, then we know that's within uh, the spec of the manufacturer. So once we've determined that that's correct, then what we do is we go outside the refrigerator, we open up the control board and we unplug the thermistor that's routed up into the refrigerator right here. You'll take and plug this thermistor in and just let it dangle outside the camper. Um, now this is reading outside temperature, which most of the times in the summertime, 85, 95 degrees. Run that refrigerator in a 24 hour overnight, 24 hours. Um, and if the cooling unit is correct and the refrigerator is working correctly, I typically like to see um, in the teens in the refrigerator and zero to negative zero, negatives in the freezer space. Now, I have found over the years that there's only two type of ammonia refrigerator customers out there. There's ones who want soft ice cream and ones who want hard ice cream. For those who like the hard ice cream, obviously we've got to be in the zeros and the negatives for us to get that, get that freezer space down there where you can have hard ice cream. So I'm going to run that in a 24 hour period. Now, if, if I come up here and I've got this out of the unit and I'm testing it, this boiler is coming up on this side and the heat comes across the top of there. If I test it over here on the far right hand side and it's so hot that I can't touch it, but there's no heat coming across the top of this, then I pretty much know that there's a blockage in the boiler assembly. That's a, that's a case that we're going to put a new, we're going to put a new cooling unit in there. Um, if I've got even heat all the way across the top of this, then I pretty much know that cooling unit is operating correctly. Um, typically that tells me that everything's circulating inside of it and everything's good. Now, if I run that overnight and let's say I have 25 in the refrigerator and I've got, you know, 10 or 11 in the freezer, then that pretty much tells me that when this refrigerator is running on the controls, there's absolutely no way that that control board is ever going to satisfy the temperature inside this refrigerator. So what causes that? Well, one, again, tin foil, not actually allowing the thermal mastic to transfer and pull the heat from inside the refrigerator out because it's an absorption refrigerator, having trouble pulling the heat out of the refrigerator. Um, two, got to check the thermistor and make sure that the thermistor is within the spec of the manufacturer. And then here's the other one that I've run into, and this is something I don't see any of you guys talking to, and this is something for years I have battled, okay? That is the original control board. This is the, uh, the control board for this particular 1350 model. Um, and what I have seen over the years, and this, this, this board right here, retails right now for $446.79. This is a very expensive board. And so when I tell the customer that we've got to replace this board, they're not very happy with me, okay? What's the purpose of this board? The purpose of this board is obviously to read the resistance of the temperature in here and then to switch the, switch the refrigerator from 120 volt to propane and back and forth. That's the purpose of this board. Now, the thing that I see fail on this board, particularly more than anything, and nobody's talking about this, the component inside this board that reads the resistance for the thermistor in the refrigerator, I have seen this over the years, and I don't care if I go out and put a brand new board in, um, I might get a call in two weeks, I might get a call in two months, I might get a call in 12 months that the refrigerator again is not cooling correctly, okay? And so what happens is this control board stops reading the resistance correctly. Even though we have ohmed out the thermistor and it is between 8,500 and 9,500 ohms, the board still is not reading the right resistance in the board because the board component is failing. So people say, well, how do you resolve that instead of just putting a $450 board on this unit every time it goes bad. So the secret to resolving the failing component on the control board is this little jewel right here made by Dinosaur Electronics. And this is a thermistor adjuster. Now the beauty about this is, is all this, all you have to do with this product 
is obviously plug it into the board right here. And then your thermistor from the refrigerator, which is in right there, is going to plug in to this right here. Then it's got this two-sided two sticky material that you just put on the case somewhere. And what this gives us the ability to do is John Smith calls me and says, hey, my ice cream's not cold enough, and you can see colder and warmer. This gives the customer the ability to adjust his refrigerator to make it colder or warmer. This has a setting that adjusts one through five. It's not enough resistance change in the board problem to make the refrigerator get cold enough. Now, before I go any further, I have seen these boards as much as 12 degrees off. So if you have a refrigerator that not cooling and it can't get below 43, 44, the manufacturer will tell you 31 to 42 degrees is, a, is an acceptable temperature. I don't ever want to have a customer that has a refrigerator that's warmer than 38. Um, it just starts causing problems with your dairy stuff. So I have seen this board off as much as 12 degrees, okay? So what this adjuster gives us the ability to do is now my customer can go in here and if he wants things a little colder or the board is off a little bit, it gives him the ability to go in here and tweak this temperature to get that temperature down where he needs, where he, where he wants it or he needs it to be. Now, a couple other little items that uh, I want to touch on, uh, and this is, this is kind of important also, is in a lot of the 1350s originally, and you guys may have seen this in your refrigerator, the thermistor was actually attached to a clip in the very top of the refrigerator. Um, the, the OEM manufacturer has actually changed that now where they give you this clip uh, in a kit and they want this to now go back in the coil like the original six cubic foot and eight cubic foots originally did. So that's one thing that if you see that, you want to change that to actual coil on the refrigerator. Now, something else that I want to touch base with, and this has always been a, a this has always been something that I do um, on mine is again, remember, this is an absorption refrigerator. So we have to absorb the heat from inside the refrigerator out, but we have to also reject that heat out of that coil. How do we do that efficiently? Well, I can tell you another problem with the 1350 is the thermal button that's mounted on the top of the coil over here. You guys have seen those thermal buttons on there. That thermal button is designed to come on at 189 degrees. Guys, that's a bad idea. I wanna get rid of as much heat as I possibly can, as quick as I can, because some of you guys are in Florida, and when it's hot, you're gonna have a hard time rejecting that heat. So I, every one that I work on, whether I, it's for a cooling unit, control board, or some other uh, issue, I always change uh, that thermal button out to a Seco 100 degree thermal button, always. First thing I do. When that coil here gets up to 100 degrees, I want those fans on, I want them running. I wanna get as much heat out of that unit as I can, as quickly as I can, because the more heat I can reject, the cooler I can absorb the heat out of your refrigerator and you're gonna have that hard ice cream that we talked about. So thermistor, make sure it's in the right location. Gotta change, gotta change that. Now, if I ever, the thermal button. Now, if I ever do have to pull it out, I do always update those fans. Uh, the fans that are on there are only about 56, 57 uh, CFM, if I'm not mistaken, I could be, but I'm almost certain that's what it is. Um, I always change those out with 107 CFM per fan, so 214 uh, CFM of air moving through there, uh, and people always go, wow, you know, I never heard the fans before, but now I hear them now. Well, again, at 189 degrees, it's hard for that fan to come on because you've really got to build a lot of heat. Um, you know, and I tell people, hey, unfortunately, you're going to hear the fans more because I've got a design where the fans come on at 100 degrees. So we want to reject as much heat in that unit as we possibly can. That is that is key. Um, so you guys have kind of seen some of the situations that we deal with on this. This is stuff that I never hear anybody talk about. Um, I had a lady that uh, called us the other day, wanted us to come out and work on a 1350. 
And I told her, I said, ma'am, I really don't want to do it mobily because they, they, there's a lot of issues going on. Um, you know, it really needs to come to the shop because there could be, there could be a lot. She lived away from here. She just kept on to the point where she knew, I really need some help and I don't care. I just need somebody. So we sent somebody out there, um, ran it, put a thermistor adjuster on there, told her, said, listen, um, you're going to have to call us in the morning and let us know how it goes. Next thing I know, I get a BB and B report uh, where she's upset and she's mad and she says that she had another technician out there and the technician had the manufacturer on the phone and the manufacturer did not understand why I was doing what I was doing with the thermistor adjuster. Um, you know, this is stuff that nobody's talking about. This is stuff, once you resolve the, the tin foil, once you resolve the airflow with the fan and the thermal buttons, once you resolve the problem with the control board, um, and I know it sounds like a lot, but guys, I'm telling you, um, this is this is all key to doing this. Um, one other thing I want to mention is, again, if this unit is in a slide out, you do need to verify that the baffle is done correctly. Um, when you look at that and take the cover off up top, there should be a baffle that comes in, comes up be be below that coil here, one half inch below. And then usually there should be a piece of sheet metal to go up in here. The number one thing that we do not like, heat rises. Everybody knows this. Heat's going to rise. The problem with heat is the heat doesn't like to take a left. That heat gets up there, and if it's got a spot, it's going to tumble, and it's going to tumble, and it's going to tumble, and it's going to be very hard to reject that heat out of there. So we need to make sure that our baffle is done correctly so that way when the fans come on, that air is going across the coil and is rejected out the top. That's also another key point that we need to do. Guys, once you get all these things resolved, this is a great unit. This, this unit runs fine. Yes, you may have some trouble with the doors. Um, there are some videos out there where we where we see people talking about door situations. That's that's with that. That's with another manufacturer. They, they all have a little bit of issue with the doors. But number one thing, the cooling unit has to be absorbing the heat out correctly has to be installed right. Uh, the controls have got to be reading correctly and we've got to be rejecting heat. If you can get all those things, you're going to have a nice cold refrigerator. Guys, thanks for watching. Please go out there and, and like and subscribe. Please go on to uh, Ford RV Refrigeration Training Center, uh, like and subscribe on his page. There's nobody out there that knows more about RV refrigerators more than him. Uh, if I can help you, please give me a call uh, and thanks a lot. Thank you.